Are you tired of being obsessed with men that don't give a damn about you? Do you wish you could have those men obsessed with you the same way you see other women have them wrapped around their finger? Well, today is your lucky day because on today's show, we're going to discuss why telling men no will make them obsessed with you and how you can use this strategy to get any man you want drooling over you let's start first off with the challenge it puts them in their place this is good and it challenges them to actually have to be better and do better to turn that no into a yes now obviously i want us to be very clear on this i'm not referring to you telling a man no simply because you're actually genuinely uncomfortable with the situation or a circumstance or something that he's doing what i'm referring to is telling him no as a way of forcing him to actually have to put in effort and work to get his desired result i want you to imagine you're on the street okay you're on the sidewalk just walking down you're, you have a sundress on your dump trucks flowing in the sundress you're just having an amazing day and i come up to you okay i come up to you just look you don't even recognize me it's just randomly me and i ask you i say hey um there's two versions of this approach okay so in the first approach i simply ask you hey uh can i ask you a couple of questions like randomly or version two i come up to you and i say hey you want to win a hundred dollars and you're like wait what I say, I got a hundred dollars for you if you can just answer these couple of questions. And you're like, wait, for real? And I pull out of my pocket a hundred dollar bill and I'm like, nah, for real. And I'm like, look, I got the camera guy right there. If you want to answer these questions and you can answer them right, I got a hundred dollars for you right now. Cash, gold, hard cash. Which one are you more likely to answer those questions? You're more likely to answer those questions when there's some sort of reward involved with the challenge of answering those questions, okay? So it's funny how when you structure things where there's a challenge and reward, things become very much more intriguing to you and you'll actually allow yourself to focus your attention and time on that thing because of the way it's structured. And so I say that to say it's the same thing with you when you can structure yourself in a way where access to you becomes the reward. And the challenge is trying to be the actual man that you need him to be or need any man to be that's going to be your partner in order for him to get the reward, which is the access to you. Well, now you've just gamified yourself. Now you've turned yourself into something intriguing that needs to be worked towards and massaged and needs to be focused on. Number two is value. I need you to understand that value is not really about quality. I know it sounds strange. I know it sounds stupid. I know it sounds weird. Value is actually about perception. The thing about perception is it can be manipulated. Let's just think about fashion for a second, okay? In reality, for the most part, there isn't a drastic change in, in terms of quality of the clothes in Louis Vuitton versus H&M or your regular everyday store. I know we would all like to think that there's a massive difference. There's someone at Louis Vuitton sitting here handcrafting with an eyeglass every single little stitch and they just put in their blood, sweat, and tears into every single garment of... In reality, they get made in the same sweatshop by the same small little Asian boy. What you don't realize though is that the actual thing you're paying for when you're paying for these uh, high fashion clothes is you're paying for the brand name. What that means is you're paying for the perception of quality, not the actual quality. Obviously, there is a limit to that. You're not going to pay for garbage quality and only perception. There is a slight quality increase. However, the quality increases between Louis Vuitton and H&M isn't so great that it requires the price to be 10 times or 20 times or 100 times. The difference in actual quality is not equal to the difference in actual marketplace value. In the process of getting to know you, he's going to categorize you based on how difficult it is to get access to you. And if he experiences you in a way where access to you is very easy or even to the point where it's kind of annoying because he always has access to you and you're always available to him, your perceived value is going to go down 
and down. When you tell men no in that context, it allows them to recognize that only someone with real value would be able to turn me down. Number three, I want to discuss with you focus. Now that he is being challenged because you're telling him no, now that he actually has to work towards something like a video game, in turn, it requires him to actually have to focus on what is happening with you, what is happening in the relationship, how things are progressing, and if he is actually making some forward progress to where he wants to be. That is good because when you have a man focused on you like that, what can he not be focused on? Random girls. And when he's thinking about, oh, how can I turn this no into a yes? What do I need to do? Okay, well, she likes uh, guys that get her flowers, so maybe I should get her flowers. Oh, she said that she uh, really enjoys this uh, favorite chocolate of hers. Okay, for our, our little dinner today, I'm going to bring some of her favorite chocolate. You see, when you have a man in a state where he's thinking about how to woo you, where he's thinking about how to impress you, where he's thinking about how to knock your socks off, that's when you actually have a creative man who's trying to do the most in order to get more and more access to you or in order to get you to see him and notice him or turn that no into a yes. Remember when I gave you guys earlier the example of me coming up to you on the street and saying, I'll give you $100 if you answer these three questions the right way versus me just saying, can I ask you a couple of questions? If I just tell you, can I ask you a couple of questions? Even when I ask the questions, you're not going to be quite very focused on the questions I'm asking. You're not going to particularly care if you answer them the right way or an honest way or the truthful way. It's really not going to matter to you. You're probably just going to answer the questions as quickly and as painlessly as possible versus if you're answering the questions in or in uh, to, in order to get $100 out of me, you're going to be focused on, okay, am I answering this question right? Okay, let me think, uh, does this answer even make sense? Okay, what what what, am, what is required of me of, of this question? How, do, how am I supposed to answer it right? And you're going to be so much more focused on each individual question than you would be if there was no reward at the end. And the reason I bring up that example is because I want you to understand how important and good for you that dedicated focus will be and is when you tell him no and now he's challenged in order to try to show you right or prove to you that the no can be a yes if he just works for it number four investment they end up being the pick Misha because they want so badly for you to pick them and in the process of that while he is working towards that and, and overcoming all these challenges, he has to overcome all these obstacles he has to overcome. What ends up happening is he becomes more increasingly emotionally invested in you and the relationship because over time, as he puts more of his dedicated uh, brain, thought, power, energy and focus into you, he now is invested in the outcome. I'm putting so much work into this relationship and trying to make it work, trying to get her to see me, trying to get her to be with me. Now I'm invested in the fact that hopefully all this work ends up in us being in the relationship. It's also going to make it a lot harder for him to walk away from you. That's good for you. If it's a lot harder for him to walk away from you, he's probably not going to participate in a lot of actions that would make it easy for you to walk away from him or that would make you uninterested in him. And so now you've kind of set him straight where you've put him in a position where you actually are the prize, but if he wants access to the prize, he's gonna actually have to act right, which means he's not gonna be able to act a fool and expect to still get the prize. Just that fast, you don't have to tell him to do anything. You don't have to tell him to act right. You don't have to set him straight. You don't have to yell at him. You don't have to nothing to him. Your power is the access to you. So let's imagine where you've been in a relationship with a guy where you know you should leave this relationship, but because you're invested in the fact that you've given your squirtle away now, you've invested so much time into him, right? You've spent so much time around him. You guys have built so many memories together and you're like, oh, this relationship's not working. Oh, I shouldn't be in this anymore. Oh, this is too toxic. Oh, I got to end this. But I'm, I've put in so much investment into you. How can I walk away now? I literally just wasted six months of my life. And so you stay longer simply because you don't want to throw away the amount of time and energy you've invested into the person. I, I give this example because I want you to understand how powerful investment can be. Number five, insecurity. So let's say you are planning to go out on a night to the club with your girlfriends. And let's say for whatever reason, okay, at this particular club, 
they say, hey, we got a new promotion going on going on at this club. Only the pretty women get in for free. And you're looking in the mirror, you're looking at you and your group of friends, and you're like, she a baddie, she knows she a 10. She a baddie, she knows she a 10. She a baddie with her baddie friend. And you're like, we're all bad. We're all getting in. This will be the easiest piece of cake entry we've ever gotten in our lives. And so you all get dressed up, you know, you get do your hair, do your makeup, you, you know, you're singing Ice Spice and all that good stuff. You're twerking up a storm and you walk up to the line in the club with all your confidence. You're like, oh, she a bad as she knows she a 10. And your friends go past and they all go past and he's like, yep, come on through, come on through. And then when you get up, he goes, <gasps> stop right there. You're like, wait, what are you talking to me? And he goes, yeah, you're, you're going to have to pay $20. You're going to be like, <laughs> You, I bet you, you're going to start saying that. I bet you, you've never dated a girl. Like you see this dumb truck on me. You see these yiddies on me. You might start twerking. You're going to start tearing. I can't, I can't believe the disrespect you show me after I come to your establishment and show this place. Like, girls, let's get the, let's get the F out of here. Who, do, who, who are you? Who are you? You ain't never been with a girl like me before you start breaking down. All he said is pay up. And just that fast, your insecurity has been triggered. A bouncer who was probably murk, probably disgusting, that you wouldn't have even looked twice at if you saw him in public in real life outside of the club. Now, all of a sudden, a guy you would never even care about what he thinks of you because he's not your type or whatever. Now, all of a sudden, he's your main priority and you're focused on, you're thinking about, why don't you like me? Why don't you want me? Why why, why, why don't you think I'm, I'm as pretty as the other girls, right? Because he's triggered your insecurity. Now you're thinking about all the different ways you can prove to him that you a baddie and you a 10. And you might start acting a fool and acting out of character just so you can prove and get the approval of this guy, this bouncer, that you are a 10. And so the reason I give that example is because it's the same thing with men. You see, when you can trigger that insecurity and he's looking and searching for your approval, you'll have guys doing things for you that you never even thought guys would ever do for you, simply because they're trying to prove to you and themselves that they're worthy of being in your presence, that they're worthy of dating you, that they're worthy of getting access to you. Because if they don't, they're going to feel as if they're not good enough.